Hi all, this is Mr. Yeager with Physical Science. Uh, this is going to probably be a fairly short video just reviewing uh, or introducing uh, radiation in the physical science um, curriculum. Uh, we're looking at what's called nuclear radioactive decay and then we're going to describe the different types of radiations that can be released. In other videos we'll go over half-life and nuclear reactions and the pros and cons of nuclear power to kind of complete that standard. All right, so for this one real quick, um, you know, with nuclear, uh, with uh, looking at the atom, okay, so this is still part of my atom unit, um, the atom can release energy, which then can obviously be used, but we have to understand how does that occur and what happens with that. So the process of an atom essentially releasing energy is called this radioactive decay, this nuclear radioactive decay, where we're releasing this energy from the nucleus, and when that happens, a new element will be developed, which means protons will change. Okay? If protons don't change, we don't, really, we don't have a new element, but it's probably going to happen because it's going to rearrange that nucleus of the atom, where the protons and neutrons are, and create something new. So we're interested in, again, what's going to be released by that. Okay? So again, it kind of just is another sort of just picture my own lovely drawing versus a nice diagram of it. All right. But it would be the, again, radioactive decay is where we're going to release this radiation. We're going to be able to figure out what it becomes if I give you some clues about, um, you know, what type of radiation is released. And that's what we basically have to do next. So there's essentially three types of radiation. I'm going to include another particle on this as well because it's going to be useful when we eventually get to the, um, the uh, sorry, when we eventually get to the um, blanket, nuclear reactions, there is, a, there is a fourth particle that will be in nuclear reactions that we have to be prepared for. But there's three main types of reactions here. Okay, whoops, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm trying to make this a little bit larger without getting you sick. All right, there we go. All right, so the first type of radiation we have out there is called alpha. Let me change the color here so it looks a little bit nicer. Let's go to that color, blue. All right, alpha. The symbol for it that we're going to see is 4,2-H-E. Now, you might immediately go, wait, maybe you recognize that as helium. An alpha particle is the size of a helium nucleus, and it is made up of two protons, and this is the mass number at the top, which means there's two protons and two neutrons, but it's not a helium atom, okay? It just happens to be two protons and two neutrons being released, all right? So that's, that's why we use that symbol for alpha particles. The charge of it is going to be positive. It's going to be positive because it has protons, okay, and no electrons. For mass, I'm, I do this very generally. I just say it has a large mass, and that's going to be in comparison to the others, all right? It has a large mass. This last column is supposed to say energy danger. It has a low energy. It has a low danger. Um, what I'm looking at there is essentially, if this gets released, are you in danger? The answer is basically no, okay? You can block, uh, if I say what can you block it with? You can block alpha with basically your skin. You can block it with paper, okay? It's, it's not very strong at all. Okay, so I mean, it's not, you don't have to be afraid of that one too much. Now, if it somehow did get inside your body, that would cause some, so a little bit of damage. You gotta consider these ba things basically being like little bowling balls on DNA and stuff, but, and other atoms, but they would basically be blocked by your skin. Your skin is tough enough to basically to resist that going through. The next one would be beta. You're gonna see these, all these have basically uh, Greek letter names. Beta. I believe it's primarily going to look like this, 0, negative 1, E, which kind of looks like maybe it's an electron, okay? But it has a weird setup over here. If you recall again, as we've done with atoms, the top number represents the mass number, the bottom number represents the atomic number or number of protons. That is not really the case with these symbols, okay? They're kind of using that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. And so that's the thing is, how can I have a negative one proton? It's not a negative proton. It's a particle that ha that's being released that's the size of a proton, but has a negative charge with it. And there you go. So therefore it has a negative charge, okay? It has a very small mass because it does have, it is a particle, all right? There's still a little bit of mass with it. 
and we will say it basically has medium danger with it. All right, you need basically wood to block beta out. Wood, bricks, and stuff like that. So if you're in a building, you're gonna be okay from beta radiation if it's extreme. The thing is, and not the scary, this stuff's being released all the time, all right, from the soil and everything like that. It's just, it loses energy pretty quickly as it travels through space. And I mean, it's not like it's a ton of it. It would be whether a lot, like you get a beta bomb and this gets released, that would be more extreme. All right. The last one is gamma. This one has a funky looking symbol where it's zero, zero, and then a goofy looking, like I just call it a Y, like a funky looking Y. Uh, so that's gamma. It has zero charge because you can see it has no particles in it. There's no, pro, there's no protons, neutrons, negative proton things. It is actually pure energy, so it has no mass, okay? And it has very high energy. For this, you would need very thick lead. Uh, I mean, I'm just gonna say thick lead. You would need to have basically a very, very, very highly insulated area. So, I mean, this is what we have to be worried from in nuclear power plants is if this gamma radiation gets let out. It can be blocked by very thick concrete. It can be blocked by, you know, a large layer of water in between. It's just, it's, it's pure energy, it's the most dangerous. This would just zip right through your body and you wouldn't even notice, like you'd feel, it's, it's basically, what, it's similar to ultraviolet rays when you get sunburned. You'd probably feel, you'd probably eventually look like you got burned, but then later on, unfortunately, you might realize there's something actually wrong and cancer could develop, et cetera, okay? So these are the three main types of radiation that's gonna be released from atoms, all right? Uh, we will see alpha and beta be used in our nuclear equations. Gamma, not so much because it doesn't really affect the uh, size of the nucleus. It's just, this is the energy that's, the energy that's helping hold it together. It gets released and it's in, turns into the form of essentially some gamma radiation as well. So that's, that won't help us really identify the element, but it, you might see it still in some nuclear reactions. The last one that, I, that you should add as well, this is not a radiation, okay? So this is like a star one because we're gonna use it in nuclear equations, is a neutron. So a neutron is not radiation but it's gonna take on the symbol 0, 1, N, and then I don't care about the rest, okay? But we just need to know that symbol so I can use it in nuclear equations later on. But that's it, that's all I'm looking for in this first part, basically radioactive decay is where we're gonna release radiation, and it could be any of these three types of radiation, alpha, beta, and gamma. We need to know the symbol, the charge, the mass, the energy, to be able to describe basically what's happening there. All right, thank you very much.